this is to be what I call a complicated corner pour. Uh, it'll be a typical uh, corner pour, except that I plan to make uh, very close together lines in it so that it gets very um, narrow lines of color, very finely divided. Uh, and the way I plan to do that is, uh, first of all, just do a standard corner pour, pouring the alternating colors into one corner, and then uh, kind of in the traditional way, doing the radial swipes of a corner pour, but putting those swipes quite close together, closer than I normally would. And then, because in a corner pour that's swiped this way, the farther from the pouring corner you get, the wider apart the stripes are, I'll probably come back in with a kebab skewer or something narrow like that and put in some extra lines here just to uh, complicate the pattern out here far away from the pouring corner. I'll probably improvise that when the time comes to see what looks good. And then, once I have that, I plan to do uh, some concentric circles using the um, pouring corner as the center of that imaginary circle. And those also could be quite close together using a very thin skewer to make the stripes. And I'll finish that up that way. That should give a really complicated pattern, which is what I'm looking for. This is my recipe calculated on SoCalc.net. Um, it is coconut oil, lard, olive oil, and sunflower oil. That's high oleic sunflower. That um, I've used this mixture in the past, and it gives a very uh, nice soap that's very slow moving, which is what you want in a complicated uh, swirling pattern like this. I will harden it up a bit with some sodium lactate uh, at about half a teaspoon per pound of oils. I, I know it's often recommended that you use a teaspoon of sodium lactate per pound of oils, and maybe my teaspoon is the wrong size, but I find that that tends to make a crumbly soap, so I've cut that in half. And then I'm going to use my fragrance oils at a 0.7 ratio. My colors are going to be winter white mica, black pearl mica, laurel green mica, Maya Gold Mica, Umber Brown Mica, and Copper Penny Mica. For fragrance, I'm using a mixture of Nature's Garden Patchouli Fragrance Oil and Essential Depot's Sandalwood Fragrance Oil. Uh, both of those work, work really well in a slow-moving soap. They don't accelerate, they don't um, discolor or separate. So I think that should make a nice earthy smelling mixture to go with these colors. I have my uh, colored batters all mixed up so they are ready to pour. So I'm going to do them white, brown, green, uh, copper, black, and gold. As is usual for a corner pour, I've got this batter really thin, not, not at all a trace yet, just nicely emulsified. two cycles of color. There's three cycles. 
Usually on a corner part for the fourth cycle, I try to use half of what I have left. Then for the fifth cycle, I try to use all but a tablespoon or two. series in the in the pouring corner. Okay, now to do the radial swipes, I'm going to use the narrow end of a chopstick and go at maybe half inch intervals. very straight but that won't hurt anything. And then using a kebab skewer I am going to put an extra stripe in these wide spots. Centric circles. I don't have a lot of color here on the pouring corner, so well, that's going to give a nice stripe anyway. And I'm going not even quite half an inch apart on these. So there is the newly poured soap looking straight down on it. That's pretty complicated. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. And then here it is with the bar dividers inserted. So as usual I will insulate this and we'll have a look at it tomorrow when it comes out. The soap is a day old now, so I'm about to unmold it. Um, 
It turned out pretty free of uh, soda ash, even though it was a wet recipe. I did spray it with isopropyl alcohol before covering it last evening. This is the bottom of the slab before the bars are separated. Here are the finished soaps out of the mold. These are top surfaces. I've not shaved these in any way or otherwise messed with the top. I probably will do a little bit of planing on them eventually, but they don't need much. And then these are sides. I think that turned out pretty well too. Kind of a wood grain look to that one. And then these are ends. Same deal there. And then these are bottoms. The two on the right are exactly as they came out of the mold. I've not done anything to them. But these two on the left I uh, planed away maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So there is a nice pattern just under that surface. I probably will do that to all of them once they've got a little bit harder. So there's the finished product.